guys, welcome back to another episode here on Sail to Spear. So this episode we are going to do a walkthrough of my Hobie Adventure Island sailing kayak and we're going to look at the gear that I take out to remote islands on my trips. Alright, so as you can see this is a trimaran sailing kayak around 5 metres in length and is constructed of polyethylene by the company Hobie and can carry uh, 181 kilos. Uh, what I love about this craft is it has three sources of propulsion. The first is the vertically battened mainsail, which has its own roller furling and enables the sail to be rolled out or in whenever needed. The second method of propulsion is the mirage drive, which utilises the strength of your legs to pedal, driving two duck-like fins and can go either forwards or reverse by simply pulling a cable. I can also carry a paddle which can be broken down into a single blade. It has a retractable dagger board which enables the craft to sail upwind and without a dagger board the craft would simply slip sideways. Being retractable is also very useful for beach landings or passing over shallow reefs. Steering the craft is through handheld rudder controls. In Polynesian terms the main hole is named the Vaka. The two riggers as we know them are named Armas and the supports connecting the two outriggers are named arcas. When the two retractable armors are deployed, they give this kayak a huge amount of stability and buoyancy. Attached to the arcas are my tramps, which not only are extra comfy, but give me more deck space. Within the main hole, I have three hatches for storage, with the back hatch housing a 17 amp lithium battery to run my sounder and GPS. The middle and front hatch I'll show you when we load the kayak ready to go. On board I have a sounder and GPS and I have this Vantage seat that doubles as a camp chair. Really really useful when heading out camping. Also I have a beach wheel cart which enables me to get this craft up the beach. Also I want to show you my anchoring system. So I've got a bungee strap here which secures the secures a little bit too good <laughs> um, which secures the anchor and that just comes out two meters of time chuck that out there watch out ducky and I've got a bunch of rope there and also made up this little uh, tube for just made out of PVC and marine carpet and that just houses the chain so it's not rattling around and I've also got my EPIRB here as well, uh, just in case of emergency. I can grab that really, really quick. So this is the usual stuff that I take out on my trips, out to the islands on my kayak. Um, starting over here, we've got our dive gear. Down here is all of our cooking and eating gear. Our sleeping gear up the back there. Uh, safety gear there, um, Esky keeps stuff cold and a bit of other food there. Um, essentially I try and catch as much as I can while I'm out there, so fish or lobsters, whatever I can get hold of. So we've got some water there, uh, we've got a first aid kit down there, uh, we've got a box of electrical stuff, so that's all like solar panel charges, that kind of stuff, and then in this one here is all my GoPro. And this case here is actually for my phone, so I can actually carry that on me. And we've got one box here, which has just got a few spare parts for the Hobie, for easy access. So these are my dry bags. These are really essential when you're in a wet situation like a kayak. Uh, even though the stuff goes down in the hole, some water does penetrate down into the kayak. So you've got to have some sort of way of uh, keeping them dry. Um, so a big 30 litre bag, got a, that's for my kitchen stuff. Now I've got a, a 30 litre and a 20 litre for my camping gear. Uh, my safety gear, I also put that in a little small, small 5 litre bag. Right now I'm using a 5 litre bag for my clothes. Um, right now I'm just taking out some uh, shorts, t-shirts, some jocks and that's about it. Uh, but I will need a bigger bag uh, with winter coming. Uh, probably going to upsize to a 10 litre bag that I can put in the jumper and a pair of long pants. And yeah, alright, let's get packing. 
Yeah, so for cooking, uh, I've got two sources of cooking. Uh, one is this jet boil. You guys should all know what a jet boil is. They're a pretty cool little unit. Gas canisters. So I've got two there. And the reason I have two is one, so I don't run out of uh, fuel, cooking fuel when I'm out the islands. Because where I go essentially is mostly national parks and you're not allowed to have fires. Um, and I need some means of cooking my food. And the second is this little 360 burner as well. And um, yeah, that way I can sort of cook two meals at once. slides in there. So I've got a couple of cooking pots as well. These just fold up. Fire starter, in case my lighter gets wet. got a lemon squeezer. Why do I have this? Um, I am catching a lot of fish and I use lemons a lot so it just makes life a little easier. A couple of sporks and a knife, a pair of tongs, a couple of filleting knives, a pair of chopsticks, Garbage bags, take a little with you guys. Uh, Ziploc bags, uh, and a mug, which coffee, or I can drink out of it. And last of all, I have these chopping boards. So also in the same bag, I'm going to put my um, ketchup, tomato sauce, sweet chili sauce, honey, and we all know the secret sauce. case it does spill, doesn't go through my entire bag. And that is my kitchen bag sorted. So just when you're rolling up these dry bags, do a couple of rolls, push the air out of them. Keep rolling. Flip it up. It's done. Next we have our camping bag, so we've got the 30 litre bag and in here I've got a hammock. I like to sleep in a hammock most of the time when I'm out there, it's nice and cool. And I've also got a, a bug net on that as well, which is already attached with the ridge line. Hammock straps, so they're pretty cool, you can get them online. I've got a couple of clips which I've uh, attached to the end to make life a little easier. And the beauty of using a strap is you don't damage the trees that you're tying to. Uh, inflatable pillow. And this is a rainfly. So I've only just got this, I haven't used it yet to try it out. I'll let you know how it goes. And my sleeping bag. Once again, we don't really need to rug up too much here in Queensland. It's pretty warm all year round. All right, 20 litre bag. All right, inflatable mattress. And another bug net. So this is more so for when I'm around, say like I'm cooking dinner or something, and midges or mosquitoes or marsh flies, which are all quite common out the islands, in plate proportion, um, that keeps them at bay. And in here is my toiletry bag, um, probably worth noting. So, bug spray, sun cream, uh, I've got some zinc. Um, some shampoo, conditioner, and deodorant, and toothbrush, and toothpaste. And last but not least, baby wipes. Wow. 
what's in the bag. Right, tape, gaff tape, electrical tape, always really useful. Bungee cord, some paracord, a uh, bit of poly rope there, a bit more cordage. Cable ties, large and small. Um, screwdrivers, flathead. Multi-tool, Aero Panther cutters. These things are really good. And some stakes for hard ground, and I've also got some sand stakes, essentially. Mostly where I camp, I'm going to be using these, but I'll chuck these in as well, just in case. And that's the bag. All right, next we have our safety gear. So, life jacket. Uh, inflatable, it's manual inflation. We've got a whistle on there as well. Uh, I've also got a little light as well, which that's water activated, so I just keep that in the bag. There's the bag. Um, torch, a little dolphin torch. Flares. So I've got the flares there. Uh, v sheet. VHF marine radio um, and a watch. Uh, why do I have a watch when I'm on island time? I guess if I'm ever um, in a situation uh, where I lose my navigation, I can use the sun to navigate. So that's why I chuck the watch, watch in there. Also have a, uh, I should note, also have a compass on board as well, uh, which sits just under the sounder. Um, that one goes in the boat. Bilge pump. These things are pretty essential. Uh, I've only ever had to use it once. It wasn't for a major situation, but it made life so much easier. And vinegar. Uh, why is vinegar in my safety kit? Uh, essentially, we have box jellyfish, Irigangi, up here in Queensland, Australia. And what this does is it, it will actually deactivate the stinging cells, stop those stinging cells from firing. Okay, next is uh, my dive gear. So, it's my lycra suit on top, my pants, it's my booties, gloves, uh, my buoy. That's actually an old uh, lifesaver buoy, um, really streamlined in the water, they work really well. And my weight belt, knife, and these are my old fins. <laughs> Seem to be doing the trick for now. I actually lost my, uh, my new ones just recently. And the remains of my old wetsuit. And then I've got these two spear guns. There's my Rife and my Vicasso. And this gun here, I've actually had this for about 20 years. And she's, uh, she's still going, going strong, so she's got a reel on that one. Anyway, I've made up this, uh, this spear gun rack. It fits quite nicely across the arcas. So this one is my uh, GoPro box. So I've got all my attachments in here. I've got a chest mount, a uh, wrist mount. I actually use this wrist mount a lot when I'm uh, filming on spear fishing. Uh, head mount, a few spare fittings. Uh, water housing, my Hero 5. Uh, by the way, thank you, uh, thank you Bray from All Things Ocean. He's uh, kindly donated me a replacement GoPro while I'm waiting to get a new one. So if you haven't checked out his channel, uh, make sure you check it out. I'll put the link in the description down below. And a spare little housing and a little floaty. And in here I actually have a little link cloth. A little link cloth as well, just to keep my lens nice and clean. So that's my GoPro box. In this one is all my other electrical stuff. So, I have a solar panel which I actually salvaged uh, from the coastline once. It was in an old buoy. Cables just for the phone, GoPro, batteries, spare batteries for the headlights. Um, so, I've got two headlights, two sets of headlights. So, I've got backup, 
and I plug this into my lithium battery on the boat as well and it uh, enables me to put a USB port into the end of it and charge my electrical equipment if I'm not using solar. Um, and they also have a second uh, solar panel, a little fold up one. Works pretty well. It's got USB ports. I'm not sure if you can see that in there. And manages to charge my phone and GoPro and stuff during the day quite well. And then I've got a little solar charge controller which I use in conjunction with this solar panel. And that will also charge up my lithium battery. So I need this if I'm going to charge my lithium battery. And some little tools. I found on a lot of my trips I actually haven't had enough water um, so I bought this 10 litre water canister uh, in conjunction. I also carry water bottles, well I should say frozen water bottles in my esky um, and it has a double use so one it freezes down and when that, when that ice melts I can reuse that water to drink. As you know on a kayak weight is essential and this is the esky that I take out I was told you about. Um, oh, would you look at that? There's alcohol in there and an apple. So yeah, I pretty much uh, freeze my water bottles, put that in there, and that should last about three or four days. I see a lot of people uh, just using like chunk ice, and it tends to melt pretty quickly. Uh, I learned this trick actually up in Queensland. Too. It's one thing that Queenslanders have done right. <laughs> I'm just going to put that aside. I'm actually heading out for a dive tomorrow, uh, but I'm just going out on a power boat. So. As far as food goes, uh, lemons. We spoke about the lemon squeezer. Take lots of lemons. Lemon goes really well with fish. Uh, and I use these sealable containers because they fit perfect into the compartment where they go to. Got some noodles there. And I've also got these little, little, uh, I don't know, tubes. I guess I've got soy sauce, uh, dishwashing liquid, uh, dill, um, mustard, curry, sugar, coffee, all in there. I've also got some um, pepper and salt, some little sachets of coffee in that one. Noodles, rice, panko crumbs. These, are, these go really well with uh, fish. Uh, milk. So I just take a few of these small milks with me and that just saves me carting a whole litre of milk. Some vermicelli noodles. And a couple of cans of coconut cream, a couple of cans of corn, and believe it or not, I love black beans, so a couple of cans of black beans as well. And some olive oil. Next, first aid kit. Um, combine dressing, Dettol, it's really important, oyster cuts, uh, if you get any sort of cuts on you, put that stuff straight on, so I've got some cotton buds there, put that on, I've also got some elastic crepe bandages there, some scissors, um, triangle bandage, antiseptic cream, burn cream, Some elastoplast. Just trying to get away. And some sodium chloride. Some splinter probes, some tweezers, and some Vaseline in case I get any chafing out there. So this uh, this little box is actually kept below my legs. Um, it's for easy access, and it's got a bunch of stuff in there. It's got a small bung plug. Uh, some spare pins as well. These are only made of plastic, so they're quite grip. They can break quite easily. Uh, Phillips head screwdriver in case the steering plays up. You can adjust that straight away. A couple of oyster knives. Uh, a couple of lures with wire traces and a knife sharpener. 
and that's pretty much it. Oh, and I do have this uh, phone case for the lanyard, so that actually enables me to go out my way and have my phone on me. I do have a GPS on the um, sounder, um, but if that does fail, I also have Navionics on the phone, so I've got uh, a backup plan there. Down the track, I would like to get a Garmin inReach unit. I've been doing a fair bit of reading about those. I don't know if anyone's got one, but I'd love to hear your feedback on um, how they go. All right, we'll get this stuff loaded and have a bit. Okay, so that's the list which I'm using right now for my offshore island adventures. Uh, one of the items I actually forgot to put on the list was this uh, this towel. So the more trips I do on the Hobie, uh, the more this list is going to evolve. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback on how you think I can improve this setup. Uh, you can leave that in, down in the comments below. I'm hoping to get out again soon on the Big Blue. Uh, for now I'll have to settle with the river, which is my backyard. And uh, once all these restrictions have lifted and the COVID-19 virus is behind us and hopefully create some more videos. Anyway, hopefully also in the near future I want to share with you a story of uh, how I was left stranded on a deserted island after a crazy, crazy storm. Um, my Hobie, all my gear uh, was blown out to sea. So I want to tell you about the events that followed and the lessons learned from this horrific experience. Um, so you may want to subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. Hope you liked the video. Uh, thanks for joining me here on Sail to Spear. Don't you love it when you're trying to uh, film and you're um, neighbor up there decides that he's going to uh, start up his chainsaw. Anyway, uh, it's time for a beer here on Sal the Spear.